Hello students a very warm welcome students are you ready to learn the next lesson in evs1 yes that is the lesson number 2 the interrelationships between living things okay students do you know what is interrelationships interrelationships is a term which indicates relation between things like how you are depend upon one another like plants and animal depend on each other to survive like see students as you are kids all you depend on your parents to fulfill your needs like they provide you food shelter they provide you shoes they provide you socks they provide you pencil box they provide you books and what not all things they provide you so this is called interrelationship now students we will start the lesson with a riddle to solve now students what is a riddle it's called a paheli in hindi and in marathi you called it as hoda okay students we will start the riddle we will read it like an age old tree with a thick strong trunk gives deep dark shade from the scorching sun like an old man bed with many strands it has ropes for swinging from every branch can you recognize the answer by seeing this picture students yes i think you can solve the riddle yes it's the right answer it is the banyan tree students now we see plants in our surroundings which are useful to us in different ways here we will learn about some leaves some leaves like the first one the betel vine these leaves of betel vine are eaten raw you might be recognizing it very well the pan eaten after heavy lunch in the leaf of this vine it is used also in worships and religious festivals too the betel leaf it also has medicinal properties now coming to the second leaf it is called the palas or the flame of the forest the flame of the forest it's a huge and tall tree seen in jungles it dried leaves are used to make eating plates also known as patravalis the young leaves of palas are used as fodder for the cattle now the third leaf students this you will recognize it very well yes it is the methi that is the fenugreek leaf see what happens methi leaves are used for making different dishes such as methi parathas and methi vegetable now students coming to the next leaf it is the wasaka that means adulsa now the leaves and barks of the wasaka plant are used as remedy for cough many cough syrups contain extract of wasaka okay students now look at this picture this you will recognize it very easily yes it is the picture of a curry leaf you might be very familiar with these leaves these leaves are used for seasoning the food they are added to different curries vegetables and snacks for a typical flavor students now look at this picture these are all the human needs all these needs are met in our 
surrounding that means we get most of the things from our environment as living beings are a part of the environment living being need food shelter air water and clothes they are all fulfilled in the environment like you see the food which is the basic need of man you can remain hungry for one day but you can't remain hungry for two days three days it gives energy to our body we can do work we can do other activities so it is the basic need of man then air we need air we cannot survive without air is it 100% true yes or no yes then shelter shelter is also important it is very needful to live it protects us from rain cold and sun from dangerous animals and enemies too then comes the water water is also the essential and important thing for a man to survive and as all other basic needs air is also equally important we can't live without air we can't breathe we may suffocate or we may die also but students do you know there are differences in the needs of each kind of living things for example now see the picture a rat is drinking a drinking water it needs very little water to drink in an entire day whereas see the elephant it needs very much water than the rat so we can see you no know, the difference in the needs of each kind of living things now see you have to think about it what do you see we see a butterfly which is sucking nectar from the flower then you see a frog see its tongue is protruded out it's catching a insect butterflies feed on the nectar of the flowers can a frog do the same no it catches insects now students look at this picture a sheep eats the leaves of the shrubs can a tiger do the same no a tiger it does not eat shrubs or leaves it eats the flesh now you can see students a fish can breathe in water but can a pigeon do that no it cannot do that now see the bull rushes grow in water see the picture plants growing in the water and can a lemon tree do so can a lemon tree grow in water no so what do we conclude is that there are differences in the need of each kind of living things now can you tell students if suppose fish leave the water will they be able to live on the land no fish cannot live on land they can only take up oxygen dissolved in water for this respiration they use their gills they cannot respire on land and would thus die now students you have to try this this is one activity for you you have to try it now like take two small boxes label them one and two add little quantity of soil and water in both of them then what you do sow two to three grains of sprouted mudki in the both of this box 
water the box number 1 with 2 spoons of water per day. In box number 2, add 4 spoons of water 4 times in a day. Continue the same process for 6 more days. What happens? The saplings that the emerge from the seeds in box number 1 show proper growth is there. Okay. And in the sapling that emerged from the box number 2 started rotting. Rotting means they started to destroy. They become weak. So what do we conclude that plants are not aquatic. Plants cannot grow in marshy areas. Means that if more water is added then the plants need the roots of the plants start rotting. And if they get more water, what happens? They rot, means they die. It also shows that moth saplings are not aquatic plants. Aquatic means water plants. And that they do not grow in the marshy areas. Marshy means wet areas. Students, we know that any type of living thing will be found only where all its needs are fulfilled. Like let's take the example of a tiger. A tiger see it has stripes. A tiger lies in wait for its prey means for an animal. It is hiding in the grasses. Its prey cannot see it in the grass because of the stripes. Now what happens? There are animals like the tea, neel guy and bison in grassland. When the tiger is hang, hungry, it can feed on them. For a tiger, there also needs to be a water hole nearby which never dries up in the summer. There must also be hills or mountains in the area so that it can find caves for Shelter means tiger, tigers inhabits the hilly areas or grasslands where it can take shelter in caves. It is seen in the areas where all its needs are fulfilled. Now see students, can you tell? This is what from where do we get silk? We get silk from the silk worm or the caterpillar of the silk moth. Now tell me children whether the trees are useful for monkeys. Yes, monkeys live on trees. In case if there is any danger they can swing from one tree to another. They remain safe from their predators. It is safer for them to live on trees than to take shelter on the land. Moreover, their food is fruits which they obtain from trees. Thus, living on the trees is useful for them. Students, can you tell the trees useful for birds? How are they useful for birds? Yes, birds take shelter on the trees. They build their nests on the trees too. Some birds are fruit eaters while some peck the insects on the bark of the trees. Thus, they easily satisfy their hunger on the trees. In this way, trees are very useful for birds. Now students, can you tell what happens if termites, termite means insects, make a tree hollow? What happens? These termites means insects, they are seen in groups. What they do? They eat the wood of the tree. What happens? It growths is stunted and the tree may die and fall down. Now see students. We keep animals in order to satisfy some of our needs. They become dear to us. What we do? We look after them. We feed them. We take them to a vet. Vet means a doctor if they fall ill. These animals to return our 
affection. Now, see students, we get milk, meat, eggs and several other things from animals. Some animals are useful for carrying burdens or drawing carts. Some domestic animals also used to help with the heavy farm in the fields. See, dogs guard our houses. Sheep gives us wool. So, students, that's all for today. We will continue the next part of the lesson in the next video. And now students, it's homework time. Write these words in your notebook 10 times and learn them. The first one is food, then water, clothes, shelter, prey, air, aquatic, marshy, satisfy and guard. Thank you. Have a nice day.